For investors, this is encouraging because it means that the Fed's not in that position, in that aggressive position, determined to kill this bull market. So that strikes me as very encouraging. You know, I think that they do have a strategy going back to uh, what Krishna Guha said, because he's awesome, by the way. Uh, uh, he was saying, you know, that, 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 it's, that it's not, you know, data dependency isn't a strategy. Their strategy's clear. Their strategy is that they are tightening. They are removing accommodation. But what they're telling us is that they are willing to be flexible about the pace, that they are going to pay attention to the data so that they don't kill this bull and they don't throw us into recession. It's encouraging, at least, that they care. Brent, uh, was yesterday's speech by Jerome Powell, uh, I mean, it seemed to have been seen by Wall Street as a green light to get back into this market at this point. Do you agree with that at all? I do agree. I think the two big fears are obviously... Um, tariffs and also the Federal Reserve, in which the Federal Reserve, I think, that fear has been overplayed quite a bit. And so I think yesterday was a big uh, green light for the market to, to move higher in the coming weeks. Now we have to get past the, the, the G20 meeting this weekend, which I actually think there'll be some positive outcomes from that that will allow the market to move higher um, as we move into the end of the year. But certainly the big fear and the two corrections that we've had this year were launched by Federal Reserve fears. If you can recall that one back in January, that was launched by a 10-year Treasury moving quite a bit higher on the back of rising inflation. And then the latest one, I believe, started back uh, in August with the 10-year Treasury at 280. It rose to 323 on the back of Chair Powell's somewhat confusing comments, which I think he walked back yesterday. And I do 100% agree. The message was confusing. Gradual, to me, meant preset. Yesterday, Chair Powell said monetary policy is not on a preset path, which I think speaks to the data dependency. And so, Brent, if you think that we are going to have some kind of a resolution to what's going on with tariffs and trade, how are you positioning yourself to the end of the year, coupled that with what we now have heard from Jerome Powell yesterday and the minutes from today? Sure. So I'm not for sure that it's a resolution. I think there is a likely outcome that at least the tariff discussion gets pushed out into the future. Um, you know, both of these presidents don't have their best alternative to a negotiated agreement, which is the basic um, minimum that you would look to come out of any negotiation with. I don't think either one of them has it being continued market turbulence based upon no deal. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I think in the U.S. that's been somewhat um, amplified over the past few weeks with this market fall. And perhaps yesterday, President Trump lost his biggest foe, which is the Federal Reserve. And so now tariffs are front and center. I guess to directly answer your question, you know, emerging markets are ground zero for Federal Reserve rate hike fears and tariff fears. And so if there is some resolution this weekend, or at least some walking back, I think you'll have an emerging markets rally. Um, but I also am barbelling that with a higher quality U.S. large cap position because we are getting later in the cycle and real rates are moving positive, albeit at a very slow pace. Uh, and so I think that's the backdrop. On the topic of a, a potential trade deal, Michael, I mean, should we maybe not fear the possibility of, of no deal? I mean, Trump in his interview with The Washington Post when he was criticizing Chair Powell said, that he was working on deals and the Federal Reserve was not being accommodating. In the most recent minutes, Steve Leeson mentioned that tariffs and trade were mentioned about 12 times in those minutes. It seems like it can, an acknowledgement that the Fed may actually be accommodating in that respect and that they are acknowledging that trade and tariffs are an impact on the economy and that they may, uh, you know, let that influence their view on monetary policy. Well, I, you know, Melissa, certainly they're, they're, uh, investors agree with him uh, because, uh, you know, the trade tariffs are a very big deal and, and they can have a significant impact. I think they're having a significant impact already on China's economy. So this is a big deal and I think the Fed is right to pay attention to it. Their second message was to pay attention to corporate debt, which I think you have to really pay attention to, to take them very seriously when they tell you they start to have concerns. If there is no deal over this weekend, uh, I, I think markets will, uh, if it's a real no deal, yes, I think markets will probably give some up some ground. I kind of expect that there will be at least a face-saving photo op in here uh, that at least continue uh, uh, the markets moving in kind of a, a more of a flashing yellow light, uh, maybe not a full-on green light. Uh, towards the end of the year, we're up about four and a half, five percent on the year. That's not bad. And maybe we can pick up another few percent in a Santa Claus rally coming here through the end of December.